Hey friends, David here. Welcome back. I hope you're keeping well. So in today's video, we'll go over how to sketch a metal cylinder using Sketchbook Pro with the ellipse and polygon selection tools. Drawing a metal cylinder is actually quite easy and you can use this technique to apply it in every cylindrical object you want. To begin with, we'll have to first draw a vertical line with our ruler. This line will be the center of our cylinder and on the top we'll use our elliptical tool to draw an ellipse which is two spaces to the right of the ruler and align it with the line right on the center. Now on the bottom we need to make another ellipse, but this time try to make the small axis a bit larger so its perspective looks more natural. Finally, draw two vertical lines right on the edges of the ellipses to close the cylinder. These lines will only serve as guide and we'll remove them later on. So the way in which metal behaves in a cylinder is that it reflects all the elements that are in front of it through its surface just as a mirror would. However, these reflections look smaller because the light from the objects, instead of being perpendicular to the mirror surface, will go in an angle right through the center of the cylinder as you can see in this quick sketch I'm doing. So on the surface of the cylinder you will see some vertical stripes which are these reflections and because metal's base color is gray most of the time you'll see these lines in different gray tones. Of course if the object is big and close enough to the cylinder you'll be able to see its true color reflected on the surface. So to begin with, we'll draw some vertical lines on the cylinder that will be the separation between the different gray tones of the reflections. And I'll start working with the black ones first, followed by the dark gray ones, in this case just one, and then finish with the gray sides. These last ones will be of a much clearer gray tone for now. And as you can see, I'm leaving a white stripe that is actually light that is reflecting on the surface. Now for this tutorial, I'm not painting the white stripe because the background is white, but if you had another background color, just make sure to paint it white as well. Now the next thing to add is more stripes to the gray surfaces. 
And to do this, I'll be using my airbrush with a small size and medium opacity and just start adding some vertical stripes on the surface using the ruler to keep them completely straight. A pro tip when doing this is to start and finish the lines outside the cylinder. This way the lines will have a continuous look. You might also want to add some very thin stripes with the airbrush between the grey tones just to give the cylinder a more realistic look. If the tones are left unblurred, they might end up looking cartoonish. Then add some shadow to both edges and you can pass the airbrush several times and use different sizes until you feel that shadow looks good. When you're done, it's time to delete all the color that is outside the cylinder and you can do this manually with your eraser or by selecting the areas you want to clear. Now for the upper base, you can once again use your elliptical tool to draw a grey line all around it and then fill the ellipse with the same grey tone with your paint bucket. If this leaves you some white pixels between the lines you just drew and the color field, simply use your pen to draw those pixels with the same color of the base. When placing the light reflections of the base, 
First, look where the lightest tone of the cylinder is to guide your saw from there. That's where the light is hitting the cylinder directly. So on the upper base, you want to keep that area that is near to the light stripe as light as possible, as well as on the opposite side, you want to leave it darker than the base color of the surface. And again, use your airbrush to make this effect and erase any excess of color that is left outside the cylinder. Then we can draw a thin white line on the edge of the upper base. This will give the impression of light reflection on the edge of the cylinder and it's actually a nice detail. So use your airbrush and ellipse tool to adjust a curvature and slightly paint the white edge. Finally, we can delete or hide our guidelines we made in the beginning and we're done. So I hope you have enjoyed watching this tutorial. This is actually the first of many more tutorials on sketching materials, both digitally and traditionally. If you like what you saw, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more sketching projects and share the video so it can reach more people and help the channel grow. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.